Creality released an entry level 3D printer Ender 3 at 2018 with MSRP under $200. Same year, an upgrade version Ender 3 Pro is available in the market with some extra dollars. It was the best entry level 3D printer under $200 for many years. Five years later, in 2023, with many competitors hunting at its market, is it still the best entry level 3D printer for beginners? We'll find out next. Both Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro sell as a kit, which means you need to build and tune in the machine yourself. It will take around 40 minutes to an hour to do so, but not as bad as Prusa MK3S kit. Ender 3 Pro comes with a few upgrades compared with its original Ender 3. The T-slot on the Pro is wider to improve stability of the printer bed. Pro also upgraded the printer bed to remove both magnet build plate. A meanwhile, power supply and other small improvements. In 2023, today the Ender 3 comes with very similar cost with Ender 3 Pro, which I don't see any reason you will pick Ender 3 over Ender 3 Pro with the same price. We are going to talk about more prices breakdown with Ender 3 and its 800 different siblings in the final thought. Ender 3 and Ender 3 Pro come with a Bolton 2 setup. It's reducing the weight on the printer head, make able to print faster and better. At the same time, they could cut costs by just giving you one Z-axis. However, Bolton 2 setup is not doing well with a model that requires a lot of retraction or the filament that requires more retraction like TPU. Generally, Bolton 2 setup will have more stringing issues. Everything looks very simple. It doesn't have many features like other competitors offer at this price point, like braille tensioner, automatic bed leveling, PEI build plate, doozy axis, director extruder, or even silence mainboard. Of course, you can upgrade any of those later on, but it will just add up cost quickly. The electricity cost of this printer is very average, and noise level is not good. Creality state that it can reach 255 cells on the nozzle and 110 on the bed. And it also able to print film like PLA, ABS, PETG, and TPU. In my test, the printer allows you to heat up the nozzle at 260 and back at 110. However, the TPFU tubing inside the hot end will be melt if you tune the temperature above 245 or 250 degrees, which I replace every single PTFU tubing to Capricorn. I also consider it is one of few necessary upgrades for Ender 3. At the same time, if you reach the print bed all the way to 110, there is chances you are going to damage the original flexible build plate. With that being said, let's get hands dirty. Since the assemble and tuning process takes somewhere from 40 minutes to an hour, I'll upload one step-by-step -step video in a few days. For now, let's get it done quickly.
Let's start with a PLA filament. Now print out both from the SD card and auto print. Both ways works really well. 50mm set per second looks very nice. The detail looks good. Overhand looks good. I can't really tell any difference between 50mm to 70mm. Now there is some minor issue with the 100mm per second one, but it's acceptable. I use YPLA to print out this little toy to test out the torrents. As you can see, all the drawing moves freely. I designed some container for my table. As you can see, those PLA are whopping on the corner if you print multiple part at the same time. Let's go ahead and try the PETG. As you can see, the layer line finish is so right that there is a lot of stringing on the back side in between those two parts. This flexible filament TPU, it's similar to the PETG, has some stringing issue between the parts. And also notice that the TPU print quality is not that good. A white rose was printed with TPU, and it came out surprisingly nice. There is absolutely no stringing, and layer finish is nice too. Now I test the polycarbonate on the original magnet plate. It came out didn't stick well on the build plate. The print fell off, so I just replaced a build plate to PEI sheet that I bought from Amazon. And this time, the print came out really nice. Now this model is not the longest print I ever test on the Ender 3 Pro. This print takes around 19 hours to print. And here's the final result. It looks really nice. Now I don't see any layer shift above the top of the print. So the single Z axis works pretty well with a super light extruder head. And those are my thinkers collection. I like to print with different filaments. It looks really nice when you have a light point on it. All those bookcase decorations are most came out from Ender 3 Pro. And this big well took me more than 50 hours to print. The final result is amazing. Yeah, I designed it so I like it a lot. Now I have to show you guys enough test print. Let's head to a final thought. I have owned many Ender theories over the years. I really like how simple it is. The print quality is good enough for my purpose. The software for Ender 3 is easy for both Curla and Prusa Slicer. It is requires minimum amount of adjustment to start a print. For beginners, you don't need to spend hours to learn what those terms mean in software setting. The Ender 3 has a higher tolerance with its slicer setting. Now, don't get me wrong. It works for me, but it may not work for you. There are still some common production quality issue and a lot of cost cutting around the corner. It is not the most capable machine with this price range at 20, in 2023. And there will be more competitors come out at entry level market. The manual bed leveling may drive you crazy if you have no idea how to get it done correctly. If you set your nozzle too low on the print of that and leave a filament on it, congratulations. It will stay there forever and bother the heck out of you. The cable management is a mess. There is also a potential of fire hazard 
if the cable is bent too much somewhere on the corner. It is loud. The 8-bit mainboard has funny sound during printing. The print speed is not fast. The TPFE tubing in the hot end will be burned and clog the nozzle if you print with higher temperature filament. The retraction of bottom tube setup makes straining a lot when you're printing flexible filament or some model requires a lot of retraction, it may not do well. Let's say you are new to 3D printing world. You are looking for entry level 3D printer. There are hundreds of low $200 printers out there. Even Creality itself released more than 10 and the 3s vary. They all have different upgrade features from Creality and cost more out of your pocket. I made a sheet that you can check it out here. All information is collected at Creality official site at December 31, 2022. There are also many other brands sell entry level 3D printer at similar price point. They will normally add some features that make it more desirable. Like AnyQ Cobo 3, which add an out of bed leveling and PEI build plate. Now, I don't like to use a date to describe this printer. Even though it is already 5 years old in 2023, let's say it is not longer the best hardware value for its price today compared to its 800 different siblings from Creality and other brands. However, it is still one of the best entry-level 3D printer for beginners. You can find all kinds of upgrades on the internet with this printer. The potential issue you may encounter, there is hundreds of people already have a solution for you. It is for someone that just wants to spend minimal amount of money and time to try this habit, or someone just wants to get hands on it in the beginning and get feel on it, and maybe consider upgrade later on. Now, it depends on where you're at. The price may have a different. If the price at your area is around $200, I'll consider spending some extra dollar for N3 V2 or Neon, or maybe other brands printer. If you can find it around 150 or less for the new one, that's really a good deal. Let's say, if you can find it at $99, turn off a video and go buy one, you'll have fun with it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. I have been owning. I have been owning. Own. Own. I have. I have a pen. <laughs> I have an apple. Oh.